Takeaway number nine, Mike Elko is the new head coach of Texas A&M. He was 16 and nine in two years as the head coach at Duke. And of course, had some time and experience in College Station as the defensive coordinator from 18 to 21. Now, when Texas A&M decided to fire Jimbo Fisher, uh, there was a bunch of people that were reaching out. There were a lot of people very interested in trying to get control of this job. Now, there was some buzz that Elko might have considered Michigan State. And then there was some buzz about Texas A&M going and getting Mark Stoops. And I can tell you that the Mark Stoops scenario was very real. Uh, I'm sure that a lot of folks will will try to push back on that and say that it wasn't. It was more exploratory. No, I'm telling you, it was very real. They were about at the two-yard line ready to punch it in before they decided to kill the deal at the last minute. But I do think that Elko is a really solid candidate. If you can win nine games at Duke, that's saying something. But it's more about how he ran the program than anything else. They're going to have great defense. They're going to be well-structured. And Mike Elko is a thoughtful and cerebral coach that's going to kind of, I think, the chaos that Texas A&M has experienced at times, I think that will go away. Elko's really smart. But he does have a very interesting background. Uh, he's been in the FCS. He's been in the MAC. He's been in the ACC. He was at Notre Dame. He's been all over the place. And he's a guy that's from New Jersey. Uh, played at Penn. Uh, considered going into the business school at Penn. At Wharton, one of the best business schools in the country. Decided to go and coach at, at Stony Brook and then Penn and then Merchant Marine. I mean, he's kind of been all over the place. Landed his first D1 coaching job under Dave Clawson at Fordham. And then kind of went all over the country with Dave Clawson. And then Brian Kelly acknowledged what a job he was doing at Wake Forest before becoming the defensive coordinator of Notre Dame. Then a couple of years later, he went to Texas A&M with the big payday in January of 2018. I really like the hire, partly because I think structure is necessary. Now, one thing we don't know is, will Elko be able to recruit at the highest level? Well, do you need to? When you have an NIL war chest that Texas A&M has, I'm not sure it's going to matter. I mean, yes, he has not run a program of this magnitude before, but I think structure is necessary and the recruiting will take care of itself because of the NIL support that he has at Texas A&M. But this was really close to becoming Mark Stoops. And there at the 11th hour, that thing broke down and opened the door for Mike Elko. There were other candidates too, big time candidates. I won't tell you who they were, but you can look elsewhere. Billy Lucci, who covers Texas A&M for Tex Ags. Go check out his timeline and go look at some of the candidates that were potentially involved here. Every single person that he listed is rooted in fact. They were on the short list here, but Texas A&M decided to go with Elko, which I think is a real testament to what they believe that Elko can be. He's a great, great, great football coach. Now it's just about can he run a program that's at the top of the college football world in a conference that's going to get increasingly more difficult with the addition of Texas and Oklahoma. And speaking of conference being difficult, 